Amen. Praise the Lord po sa, uh, for the songs that we have heard. And um, uh, this time, we've already read our text uh, in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. But uh, first, I would like to turn off the sounds of the... No? Teka, no, wala. It's gone. Okay. It's back. Okay, first, I would like to thank the Lord for uh, this week uh, in general because... Uh, it's been uh, it's been a crazy week and a very uh, hap- uh, exciting week for uh, me and uh, of course for everyone as uh, you all know that I thank the Lord for the uh, for bringing uh, baby in, uh, baby JL into our lives and it is uh, really something po that uh, I praise the Lord for every day and I'm uh, and it's the faith- the faithfulness of God. And His goodness in our lives. So, salamat po sa bawat isa na nagpray, uh, bumisita, uh, and uh, nagbigay po na kanilang uh, suporta po sa uh, time po ng, uh, naming, ng aming buhay na ito. And we praise God for that. And uh, actually today, I was uh, forcing Jalil to come to church. But she really can't uh, because of uh, what she's feeling. And hindi po po siya makakilas na maayos. Please pray that she will be uh, she will recover quickly para po makapag-attend na rin po siya. I know that she uh, she's, uh, she will miss the services and the worship service. Buti na lang po may live tayo. Kahit na maingay si Deo doon, maririnig mo rin naman yung preaching kahit pa paano. <laughs> uh, despite, so thank, thank the Lord for that. And also I thank the Lord that uh, naalala ko po nung nagpost ako sa Facebook noon na, that when Jalil uh, was... Uh, when we first knew that she was pregnant, I remember that Pastor Jesse uh, congratulated me, but then immediately said, okay, now everything that you know about the Word of God will be tested. That's what he said. So, but, uh, and I see that uh, in, every day in uh, my life, of course, uh, a, lot, a lot of things will change and has changed, but then the challenge is, magbabago din ba yung devotion mo sa Panginoon? Just because God gave you a blessing, Will it change? Uh, will it lessen your devotion to Him? Will it lessen your uh, faithfulness to the ministry? And that is, I think, that is the challenge. That is not. It's easier said than done, of course. And um, I find myself uh, having a hard time adjusting yung aking, uh, my devotion time, my studying the Bible with all these things, and also the the obvious lack of sleep. I found out that coffee is not effective anymore, so I will. I will try to buy yung sa Anchor Market yung 5 minute energy. I yung ano yung sa mga nagwo-work. Pag ininom mo daw yun, di, uh, hindi ka na talaga antukin. So so, uh, so and then last night Pastor Joel said that he's not feeling well and we might uh, be asked to preach today. So that is uh, uh, I tried to finish this note. Although I've been studying this uh, chapter for a long time, iba pa rin po yung pagka gumagawa ka na ng mensahe. Okay, iba pa rin po yung alam mo lang, naintindihan mo, na binabasa mo every day. But it's still different when you're trying to make a message that will drive home a point to each and everyone that is that will this is going to listen. So today, we're going to be studying on uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Bro, bawasa mo yung gain niya. Gain, yung kulay pula. Yung siya, yun yung mga kapag wala. Ayan. So we're trying to, uh, wag mong babawasan yung main, yung gain lang. Okay, so 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And um, I give... The, the message title for the sake of the gospel for the sake of the gospel actually I I plan to preach only on until verse 7 if I can uh, if time will permit tatapusin na natin yung buong chapter but uh, that is uh, that is the plan this morning to preach until verse 7 and the title will be for the sake of the gospel and uh, before I start uh, with my introduction let us pray Heavenly Father we thank you for uh, this time uh, that you have given us to study your word and to uh, be able to look in, in into your word and to see principles dear lord that will help us in our christian lives lord as we study today the ministry of the gospel the glorious gospel that you have entrusted dear lord uh, to us that you have uh, gave us mercy dear lord and counted us faithful to be ministers of this gospel i pray lord that we will not only 
uh, we will not uh, take it for granted, but we will uh, make sure, dear Lord, that as much as we can, with your help, we will be uh, faithful ministers and also, dear Lord, worthy ministers of the gospel, that we will be able to handle this faithfully, dear Lord, and to share with as many people as possible, dear Lord, and to and not to stain, dear Lord, the testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ and just uh, to be faithful ministers, to be uh, uh, ministers that will uh, realize, dear Lord, that our life is really about of about that gospel dear lord nothing uh everything that we do in our lives are just uh, temporary are just um extra things dear lord but our main job dear lord is to take care of this gospel as you have as uh, before you uh, you left this earth dear lord the, the the thing that you told us to do is to go into all the world dear lord and to preach this gospel and i pray lord that this will be our main mission in our lives i pray lord that through this chapter you will help us uh, uh, uh help us to know uh, uh, how we will be be faithful ministers of this gospel as the Apostle Paul and his friends were, dear Lord, that we will be the same way uh, in, in this uh, uh, the time that we live right now, dear Lord. I pray, Lord, that everything I say will be encouragement. If need be, dear Lord, rebuke us. Dear Lord, if there's anything that we lack in our lives, I pray that we'll be humble enough to change it, dear Lord, for the sake of the gospel. I pray that we will glorify your name this morning, in Jesus' name. Amen. So we have read this chapter in chapter 4, but um, uh, let's start, of course, with verse number 1. Uh, the Bible says here, Therefore, seeing we have uh, this ministry. So dito muna tayo. Uh, Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, and we have studied uh, chapter 3, uh, I think a month ago, more than a month ago, we have seen that this ministry is the gospel. This ministry of the gospel is a glorious ministry. We have seen na kung gaano ka uh, glorious ito compared even to the to the uh, most glorious things, the most glorious miracles that Christ has done in the Old Testament. Uh, to, we have seen that in chapter 3. And, and, and uh, Paul uh, uh, admits or Paul uh, readily uh, says that everything that God did in the Old Testament was glorious. Okay, imagine all the, the glorious things that 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 that, uh, uh, that God has done. Imagine to be part of, uh, to be there when Moses parted the Red Sea. Imagine what it will be like to see water coming out of a rock. Imagine what it will be like kung ikaw yung lalabas sa bahay mo and then you just pick up man, manna from heaven. Imagine what it would be like kung nandun ka sa battle na yon when the sun stood still for the people of God. Imagine what it would, it would be like kung nakita mo ang wall of, uh, a great wall fall down just because you walked around it. Imagine all these things, fire coming down from heaven, uh, going to the tabernacle, the glory of God being seen. Imagine all these glorious things. But the Bible says that all these things cannot be compared to the glory of the gospel. Now, think about this. This glorious gospel is entrusted to you and me. This glorious gospel is entrusted to our care. Uh, it is entrusted to our care. It is given to you and me. Okay, before the Lord Jesus Christ left this earth, His command to us is the Great Commission. He gave us a commission to, to, be, uh, to do our best, to do what we can in order to, uh, 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 so that this gospel will be heard around the world. And that's how important it is. Huling habilin. I don't know if meron na po sa inyo mga nabigyan ng huling habilin. But I, I, I think uh, this is, if, if someone will, will tell you something before he leaves, I believe that he sees that uh, thing as something that is very important, important for you to do. That's why before the Lord left this earth, he said that you have to go. You have to share this gospel to people. You have to be the one to be, to be sharing this. So nothing can be compared to it. Nothing can be, can be uh, more glorious than this. And, and praise the Lord that God has entrusted us this gospel. And because God has entrusted us this gospel, there are responsibilities in, uh, uh, that goes with it. There are things that goes with it. Minsan nga pagkatiwala lang sa atin ang ang malit na bagay, something that is precious in this life. Talagang lalo na pag ang nagtiwala sa atin someone that is important to us as well, talagang bibigyan natin ito ng importansya. We will we are going to exert effort. We are going to really prioritize this in in our lives. Lalo na po ang ang ministry. 
Uh, simpleng ministeryo ng simbahan. If, if God has entrusted to you a ministry in this church, singing in the choir, going to the outreach, we give importance to that. But we should not, uh, uh, we should always realize and put in our mind that the, the main mission that we have that God has given us is the, to take care of this gospel and to let this gospel known to a lot of people. The Bible says, therefore seeing we have this ministry. Even though Paul is the one speaking here, even though Paul is the one speaking uh, for, uh, for, for his fellow ministers, Paul is telling the Corinthian church, hey, we have this ministry. You have this ministry. We were faithful to give this gospel to you. Now it's your turn as well to be faithful to give the gospel to other people. That's, that's why the, the gospel has reached us because of faithful men, faithfully preaching the gospel, leaving the gospel, being a good testimony, and passing it on from generation to generation. That's why we have it now. Kaya nga po hindi dapat natin ibabaliwala. Hindi po dapat natin isasantabi. Why? This is the main goal. Man, we have our jobs, we have our families, we have all these things, but the, but, but the most important thing is how do we take care of this gospel, this glorious ministry that God has given us. And this is, uh, this is the point that I want to drive home in this, chap- in this chapter. I know there are many things that Paul uh, uh, touched on in uh, chapter 4, but we're going to put that into context. Ito yung, pa- ating, uh, ito yung ating pag-aaralan. You know, knowing this, do you feel the responsibility you have. Do you feel that responsibility on your shoulder? Do you feel uh, uh, the excitement that, you, that God has entrusted to you? Do you feel uh, really unworthy to be entrusted to, uh, na, na ipagtiwala sa yung ganitong klaseng ministry? Well, let, let us study this. Uh, let's go back to verse number one. My first point here, because of the gospel and the glory of God, and because of this ministry, first point, we should not faint. We should not faint. This is, a, this is something that our pastor uh, preached on um, yes, yesterday. It says here, Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. And, and, and it's, it, this is even more powerful because Paul is the one saying it. It's more powerful because Paul, compared to the believers that he's writing to, has experienced so many sufferings and persecution. And to be, for these words to be coming from Him, it's very powerful. We faint not. Madali pong sabihin na we faint not if your life is easy. Madali pong sabihin na we faint not if you have everything easy. But if you've experienced people pursuing you, trying to kill you, being imprisoned, uh, hurting you, uh, and doing all these bad things to you, and then sabihin mo pa, we faint not, it's very powerful. That is, that, that is very powerful coming from Paul. We see that uh, even in, in uh, his letters were written in, the, in prison. Uh, he's the one who's saying, rejoice, even though I am the one in prison. You know, th- this is an encouragement. We faint not. The Bible says that discouragement and getting weak will, 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 might cause us to quit the ministry. Uh, in, in enumerate po yan ng ating pastor yesterday, fear and all these things, fatigue and all these things can, can make us quit and make us stop doing the ministry. Paul is telling the believers not to faint. Don't be discouraged. Don't lose hope. Don't lose heart. And, if, and in many of Paul's letters, lagi niya itong inuulet. He always says this in Galatians 6, 9, And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap, if we faint not. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 13, Wherefore I desire that ye faint not at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. But napaka-blessing blessing po nito mga mensahe na ito, na mga verses ito, just considering who's the one saying it. Para bang, sabi niyo po, ako, yung nahihirapan, wag naman kayo yung ma-discourage. Ako yung nasa prison, wag kayo ma-discourage dahil nasa prison ako. Kayo nga, wala. Para bang, abang ko, encouragement ito, o sampal, or, or, or something na para lang may realize nyo. Wag kayo ma-discourage because of this. Do not uh, faint. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 13. But ye brethren, be, na, uh, be not weary in well-doing. You know, this, this warning and this encouragement is present in almost every letters of Paul because he knows that it is easy to faint. He knows that it is very much possible for a believer to get discouraged. He knows that it's very much possible for a believer in Christ to, to quit to stop doing what he's doing, to stop sharing the gospel, to feel so unworthy that he will just stop doing things for God. Do not be wary in well-doing. Do good. Share the gospel. Do your ministry. Do not faint. That is what the Apostle Paul is saying. And we should be open to that idea. Huwag natin iisipin that we are Superman. 
Huwag natin niisipin na palagi tayong malakas. Huwag natin niisipin na palagi tayong nagpapatuloy because there is a real danger of fainting. of being discouraged. And the Apostle Paul, because I have, the Lord has entrusted us a glorious ministry, a glorious gospel, for the sake of that gospel, continue. Do not faint. Wag kayong titigil for the sake of that gospel. Not for yourself, for the sake of the glory of God. Do not faint. We should not forget these words, okay? Hindi lang sinabi, ng ba, hindi lang sinabi sa verse nito na do not faint, but lagay, wag natin kalimutan, as we have received Mercy. As we have received mercy. Hindi sinasabi ng Bible, God is not telling us on your own strength, on your own might, stay strong. Hindi. The, the Bible is saying, I'm helping you, therefore stay strong. I have given you mercy, therefore stay strong. Because of God's grace and mercy, I have counted you faithful, putting you in that ministry. And because also of God's uh, grace and mercy, I will sustain you in that ministry. Kaya po madali lang din, if we just realize the power of God in our, in, in, in our lives, not to faint. The reason why we faint is because we're doing this ministry in our own strength. The reason why we faint is we're doing this ministry in our own uh, 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 ways. Sa uh, sarili natin pamamaraan, sarili natin kalakasan. Kaya po tayo napapagod, nakakapagod naman talaga. Hindi po ba? Or there are Saturdays that you don't feel like going to the outreach. There are weeks that you don't feel like reading the Bible. There are times where you don't feel like studying the Bible. There are times where we don't feel like going to choir practice. There are times that you're so tired na gusto mo matulog na lang. Why? Because really our own strength will, 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 will uh, wear out. Mapapagod at mapapagod ka. Wala naman pong hindi napapagod dito. Mga nagbabasketball lang hindi napapagod. Kahit pagod na, tuloy lang. Pero kung aaminin lang namin, pagod na rin kami. Hindi po ba? But because we love that, we continue. Kaya nga po, ganun po din. The reason why we, we faint, the reason why we get tired, the reason why we get discouraged, simply because we are doing it in our own might. We don't realize that God's mercy is upon us, God's grace is upon us, and if we will just tap into that, it's easy not to faint. Kaso nga lang po nakakalimutan. We forget about that. Okay? Not only that we should not faint, but in verse 2, we should live worthy lives. For the sake of this gospel, we should live worthy lives. I'm not saying to be sinlessly perfect. I'm not saying that lahat ng gagawin mo ay tama, but to strive to live like this. But the Bible says in verse 2, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. We see here a glimpse of paano ang namumuhay si Paul and his brethren during those times. Paano ang kanilang buhay? Paul is telling this to them. Paul is bold enough to tell them that we have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. Why? Because his life is an open book. Open siya. Uh, he's, he's telling them that, you know, I have done this. We see here the ang glimpse ng kanilang conduct, the, the conduct of the ministers of the gospel. Now, na ito yung contrast naman sa sinasabi ni Paul about, about false prophets. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 12 says, For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. Kaya po, ito yung, ito yung challenge po. The re- we have the gospel. We have this glorious gospel. Now the question is, are you living a life worthy of the gospel that you're bringing? Are you living a life worthy of the gospel that you're sharing? Kasi po, hindi po uh, unlike Paul, hindi po tayo ganun ka-open. Uh, uh, yung, our lives are not that open to each other. There are hidden things. There are secret things. There are things that only you and God knows. But the, but the Bible saying, hey, you have to turn your back from that. You have to remove that from your life. Why? For the sake of the gospel. Even though maybe these things are giving you sa, uh, uh, a temporary satisfaction or whatever it's giving you a uh, pleasure in your life. But hey, the Bible says you're a minister of the gospel and because of that gospel, you should stop that. Secret or not, stop that. Itigil po natin. Why? Because we should live worthy lives. And as I continue to study this book, I really see that napaka-unworthy po natin. We are already unworthy. No one is, uh, is worthy to, to be ministers of this gospel. But because of God's grace and mercy, He entrusted this to us. Lalo pa ba tayo magpapaka-disqualified because of it? Or sus- dahil hindi lang nga tayo karapat-tapat, sisikapin natin na at least man lang, maging malapit tayo dun sa karapat dapat na pinipreach natin. Di ba sabi ni Paul, I, I, I keep under my body. Di ba? Itong, itong, mga, itong mga gusto kong gawin. Why? So that I will not be a castaway. Para naman, pag nagpipreach ako, nagsishare ako, mas effective. 
Imagine mo ko sasabihin ko, huwag kayong mag-inom, tapos umiinom ako dito sa harap. Imagine if I'm telling you, don't smoke, it will destroy your body, but I have a pack of cigarettes here. It's not gonna be powerful. Even though what I'm saying is true, even though what I'm saying is right, no one would believe because you see a pack of cigarettes uh, uh, here in my pocket. That is, that is the only, that is the Paul's point. Be worthy of that. We're not gonna be perfect. We're not gonna be, we're not gonna be uh, um, uh, 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 sinless, but at least strive to do that. Renounce the hidden things of dishonesty. Not walking in craftiness. Ito po yung mga false prophets. Ito po yung mga false uh, preachers. They were just trying to deceive people. They're using this gospel to deceive people. They're using this gospel for their own sake. Kaya sinasabi ni Paul, hindi kami ganon. We have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. Kasi sila, they're doing things in secret. We are not walking in craftiness. Kasi sila, uh, they are just using the gospel for their own sake. Diba? Remember the context of this book? Uh, uh, the reason why Paul is writing this because of these false prophets na nag, nagko-confuse sa, sa Corinthian church. That's why he's saying all these things. We're not like that. Nor handling the word of God deceitfully. Uh, handling deceitfully means to adulterate the word of God. Haluan. Diba? Uh, tulungan mo ang gospel. You know, we can never help the gospel. The gospel is complete. It's perfect. The message is there. You don't, the, the gospel does not need your help. You don't need to uh, 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 have gimmicks. You don't need to uh, pa- para bang uh, kung ano nung gawin mo para lang maintindihan yung gospel. No, the gospel is there. It can be understood. The Holy Spirit can use the plain message of the gospel. You don't have to add or remove anything from it. That is sad because today people are preaching the gospel without repentance. Sad because today preach. Uh, preachers are, are preaching the gospel uh, only, only uh, for the sake of uh, uh, their goal is just for people to raise their hand. Kaya nga, mga, mapapansin mo, may mga preach they're preaching uh, uh, a gospel that is asking you to, hey, be afraid of hell. You don't, want, don't you want to go to hell? Of course. You don't want to go to hell. People are preaching the gospel promising heaven or scaring people because of hell. That is not the gospel. The gospel is repenting of your system, putting your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Kaya nga po mahirap Ingat din tayo sa pag-share natin. Baka naman tinakot mo lang sa impyerno. At talagang tatanggap yan. Ay, alam mo ba sa impyerno, ganto ganyan, ganto ganyan. Talagang araw gabi yung pakilang pa magsumbang pa langit. Oo, oh, pray ka tayo. It's not the gospel. But that's, that's how I was taught to share it. That's how I was taught in the Bible school. To, 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 sabi, i-emphasize mo yung impyerno. Pakita mo talaga yung, 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 yung uh, the, the terror of hell. May mga pictures pa. Ito, pakita mo, ito mangyayari sa'yo, kaya kailangan mo tanggapin sa Kristo. Tatanggap yan. But no mention of repentance. No mention of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why the gospel doesn't need our gimmicks. Kaya nga po, maganda yung mga tracks and all these things, but be careful. Maybe they're just doing that with their own knowledge and with not, not really biblical. Kaya nga po, ingat tayo. That's why in, in, in Chanso Village, before we give out tracks, we read it. And then I ask, pagka Kimerian, I ask Paul to translate it. At pagkulang, wag na natin gamitin. Why? Because in- imbis na matulungan mo sila, lalo mo silang mapush uh, into something na hindi nila maintindihan yung gospel. It's better to just go to them and talk to them, explain to them repentance and faith towards the Lord Jesus Christ. No, we don't handle the word of God deceitfully. But by manifestation of the truth, commanding ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. You see the integrity of the Apostle Paul. You see his integrity. He says that, you know, whether you like me or not, kasi itong mga sinusulatan niya, there are people here who don't like him. Whether you like me or not, you know in yourself that I am living a life worthy of the gospel that I'm preaching. You know that. And I don't know if any one of us here can say that truthfully, that we have uh, lived lives of integrity our whole lives. But then, this is the Apostle Paul. These are, 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 the, are the people who, who, who the Lord used in order for this gospel to be, to be preached. So the Apostle Paul says that, you know that, and because we are doing this, knowing that God, we, that God is our witness, we are living worthy lives. For the sake of the gospel, uh, uh, brethren, don't faint. For the sake of the gospel, try your best with the help of God to live lives that are worthy of this gospel. And I believe this is a challenge for all of us. This is a challenge for all of us. Pagka po ba tayo nag-share sa ating mga kaibigan, to our friends who do not know the Lord, who do, do not have a relationship with Jesus Christ, what do you think will they say? Hey, 
Hey, uh, uh, I want to share the gospel to you. This is the, the way of repentance and faith. I want to invite you to our church. Alam mo, uh, do you think that there are things in, in, at the back, back of their minds that they're going to blame you? Yung pong isa sa masakit. Na nasira na ang ating testimony sa isang tao, ang hirap na po niyang siran. Unless the, unless the Holy Spirit will really work in that person's heart. Unless the, the, unless the person will see na ah, ah, ganito siya dati, nagbago siya, then that is effective. But, kung ngayon, uh, kung presently we are, we, are, we are staining the testimony, our testimony, this gospel may not be effective to them if you're the one sharing. Right? Parang, let's go to church. Hey, why, why will I go to church? Yung buhay mo, kaparehas lang ng sakin. Why will I go to church? Why will I believe your gospel? You are not living a life that is different from me. I don't desire anything in your life for me. Diba? Because we should live lives na makikita ang ating Panginoon sa buhay natin. Para, para, gusto, para isipin nila na, hey, I want that. I need that. I need that changed life. I need that Christ. I need that God that, is, that, 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 that He is serving. Can people really say that sa atin? You know, Paul, he was very bold that even to people he does not like, he calls them as witness. Oh, I mean, even to people who do, who do not like him, he calls them as a witness. Kahit na ayaw nyo ako, alam nyo na hindi ako nagi, na hindi ako nang loko, na hindi ako that I was not walking, uh, uh, that, that I'm not walking deceitfully, that I have renounced the hidden things of this world. I'm not walking in craftiness. You know that. Whether you like me or not, you know that. That is this was the apostle Paul say kaya this this in, uh, this life of integrity na, na kanyang na kanyang uh, uh, pinapamuhay what are you doing with the gospel are you sharing it are we living lives worthy of the gospel is the gospel being mocked because of the life you live you know why bakit kailangan natin next point in verse number 3 the, the reason why all the more all the uh, more reason why we should live lives worthy of the gospel is because satan is opposing it Satan is opposing the gospel and he will use anything in your life to put in the minds of people not to believe what you're saying. Kaya mo dapat doble ingat. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ who is the image of God should shine unto them. Kaya nga sinasabi, sinasabi ni, ni Apostle Paul, hey, we're, 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 we're handling the word of God faithfully, we're preaching the gospel as it is, we're living lives worthy of the gospel, but meron pa rin namang hindi tumatanggap. Yun na sila ha, sila Paul na ito. Sila na na namumuhay ng, 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 ng tama sa Panginoon, meron pa rin hindi naniniwala, meron pa rin hindi tumatanggap. Kaya mga kapatid, huwag tayong madiscourage kung sa atin meron hindi naniniwala. Don't be discouraged if you are preaching the gospel every, every Saturday for two, three, four, five years in the village and then one, two salvations. Don't be surprised. Why? Because they are lost. If they're the people who will really not accept the gospel, hey, because they're lost. Because it is hid to them. The God of this world has blinded their minds. Kaya nga, that's why if, if, if Satan is blinding their minds, if Satan is covering their hearts, and then we're living lives that is unworthy of the gospel, all the more reason na hindi sila maniniwala. Especially in a country like this. Especially in a, con- a Buddhist country. A country who don't even real, uh, uh, accept the Bible to be the Word of God. They're looking at us. You cannot just open the Bible and debate with them. They won't believe a single word in the Bible. They will believe what they see in you. They will believe how you live your life. Kaya nga po, Satan is already blinding them and then your testimony will blind them more lalo na silang walang chance. All the more reason na kailangan nating ayusin, kailangan nating mamuhay of, of lives that they will see Christ in us so that the Holy Spirit can work in their hearts and remove that veil that is covering it. The Bible says here, hid to them that are lost. Sino itong mga lost na to? Ito mga unsaved. These are the unbelievers. Sabi dito, the word lost, it's from the Greek word apol- apolumi, which means destroyed, rendered useless, in the process of being ruined, put to death. Ito yung description, this is the description of the Bible of people who are lost. They are destroyed, they are useless, they are ruined, they are blinded. Do we cannot ex- uh, expect them to ac- readily accept the gospel because they're blind. Kaya nga po mga kapatid, our only job our only relationship, our only ministry to them is the gospel. Wala nang iba. Wala nang iba. 
You know, when the Bible says to, to not, nung pagka binabasa natin ng Bible and we read the be not uh, unequally together with unbelievers, this is exactly the reason why. Because they're traveling a different road. Why would you go with them? They're going to the road of destruction. Why will you go with them? Hindi lang po yan sa anumang relationship, even sa, uh, even sa uh, uh, business, even though your friends, yung best friends mo, whatever, if they are lost, they are ruined, they are destroyed, they are blinded, they're going for, uh, they're going, they're traveling the path of death. Why are you traveling with them? Unless you can pull them to, 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 to the narrow road that leads to eternal life. That's our only job sa kanila. Our only job is to warn them, hey, you're lost. Hey, you're, you're going the wrong way. Hey, you're, 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 you're heading into eternal damnation. Hey, come with me. This is the gospel. This is how you're going to be saved. Yun lang yung ating ministry sa kanila. Wala na pong iba. Because it's hid to them that are lost. But ito, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe that. That's why it's a spiritual battle. Because principalities and powers, all of these things are blinding them. Ito yung mga pumipigil sa kanila. Ito yung mga gumagawa ng paraan para hindi sila maniwala. All the more reason again to live worthy lives. Why? Because that is their chance. I'm not saying na they get saved because we live worthy lives. No, but I'm saying we live worthy lives because what, that's what the Bible says and that's what God may use in their lives. Kaya nga po, yun, uh, that, that is it. We should not faint. We should live worthy lives. Why? Because Satan is opposing it, eh, wag na natin tulungan si Satan sa pagbablind sa kanila. Because of our testimony. Number four, we should stay on topic because of this gospel. Wala na po na, uh, na, isip, na title na point. We should stay on topic. What I mean here is, the topic of the gospel is Christ. Yun lang. Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Yun lang. Wag na po natin, wag na po tayo mag out of topic. The Bible says here in verse five, for we preach not ourselves. Another reason why you should live worthy lives because you're not preaching yourself. You should, or you're supposed, uh, you're, you're supposed to be not preaching yourself. But there are people who are preaching themselves. Where we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord and yourselves and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For the sake of the gospel, you stay on topic. Stay on topic. People want to hear the gospel. People need to hear the gospel. Not what you have to say. Not your own idea. Not your life. You know, God might use your life, your testimony, of course. Uh, people, people, people can see that. People can see God at work in your lives. But hey, that is not the topic. The main topic is the Lord Jesus Christ. You give that to them. Wag po tayo mag-off topic. Hindi lang po sa pag-present na gospel. Kung hindi sa pagtuturo ng Biblia. It's all about God. Old Testament is about Jesus Christ. New Testament is about Jesus Christ. All these things that are written in the Bible is about Jesus Christ, nothing about you. Don't make it about yourself. Don't make it about your life. That's why I cringe whenever I hear preachers who preach their lives. I don't care. Your life might be good. It might be a good testimony. Tell me to that. Tell, tell that to me over coffee, okay? But don't do that behind the pulpit. Because this pulpit is solely for the preaching of the Word of God. Stay on topic. You're preaching the Lord Jesus Christ. We should not faint. We should live worthy lives because Satan is opposing the gospel and you're not preaching yourself. You're preaching the Lord Jesus Christ. Makita mo sa YouTube, may mga nag, there are people preaching the Lord Jesus Christ wearing torn jeans, earrings, uh, kung ano-anong suot. Hindi ba nakakahiya? You're preaching the Lord Jesus Christ and you look like the world. Kaya nga po, some, some people saying that Baptists are boring. You have to wear nice clothes. You have to comb your hair. Uh, you, you don't don't uh, color your hair uh, purple or pink or whatever. Boring. You cannot express yourself through your clothing. Hey, why are we doing this for the sake of the gospel? Kung ako lang magjersey na lang ako dito, laro agad pagkatapos. But bari na wala nyo ba ako dito? Kung nakajersey ako. Kung ako lang, uh, ang init init ng long sleeve. Ang hirap hirap magtali ng necktie. But we're doing this for the sake of the gospel. We're doing this for the sake that people will, will not see us, will not blame us. We will focus on the Lord Jesus Christ whenever we are preaching the gospel. Whenever we're doing that, we're pointing people to Him, not me. Hey, Him, Him, Him. Repent of your sins. Put your faith in Him. Doesn't matter what I have to say. Doesn't matter who I am. It's Him. 
Okay? For we preach not ourselves for God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness. This is verse 6. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness. This is a, this is a reference to God creating light in Genesis chapter 1. Verse 3. Okay? God is the one who made light. The, the Bible says, this same God who made the light, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, is the same God who is shining in your heart. To give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Imagine that. The God who made this world, who, who made the light, has shined in your heart. Why? For you to reflect that light to other people. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and the end goal, glorify your Father which is in heaven. Always the end goal. For God who has shined in our hearts to give the light and the knowledge of the glory of the God in the face of Jesus Christ. Notice always, lagging ang end goal. Sa lahat ng verses sinasabi ni Paul is always the glory of God. That's why next point, number five, we should glorify the one who gave it to us. Okay? For the sake of the gospel, glorify God. Verse 7 and 15. Verse 7 says, But we have this treasure in earthen vessels. And later we are going, we're going to go there. That the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. It is common for, for uh, the Bible to compare us to these vessels, earthen vessels. These earthen vessel, vessels are very um, common during this Bible time. They're very common because they're very useful. But then at the same time, they're very fragile. That if you drop them, they get broken, they're useless. Wala na. Kaya po iniingatan dapat yan. Or, or compared to other vessels na mas durable, these vessels are marami yan sa isang, sa isang uh, uh, bahay. Marami sila because they easily get broken, they're fragile. So the, the Bible says you are the treasure, the gospel, in earthen vessels na nasa atin, we are the earthen vessels. Tayo yung mga fragile, madaling masira, okay, disposable. Na pag nasira, hindi, tatapon na lang, bili na lang ng bago, yun daw tayo. The, the, that's what the Bible says. You, para bang sa panahon natin, we can compare it to a plastic container. Useful, durable, but not really that important. Wala. Pag nawala, so what? Bili na lang ng bago. Yun, yun, yung, yun, yung, uh, yun yung nakalagay dito. And, and the Bible has been comparing that to uh, uh, us to earthen vessels. The Bible says you should be worthy vessels. Okay? Uh, fit and meet for the master's use para tayo yung magamit and the reason why we are compared to this fragile and, and almost and almost uh, 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 very disposable things is so nakalagay dito that the excellency of the power of the power may be of God and not of us pagka naglagay ka sa microwave if you, you put if you put uh, a soup or whatever uh, uh, a spaghetti or lasagna in a microwave you don't get excited because of the container Oh, ang ganda naman ng ng spaghetti. You don't care. When you put it out of the microwave, you smell it, you, you, you care of what it, what's inside. Hindi yung container. You don't even care. What, wherever, lalo na ako, if your favorite is spaghetti, you don't care where you put it as long as there's spaghetti. Diba? No one looks at the vessel. The vessel's importance is, uh, the vessel is only as important as what, uh, what's inside it. The Bible says what's inside us, what is entrust, entrusted to us is the glorious gospel of God. And you are disposable. You are easily broken. Madali kang masira. Madali kang ma mawalan ng kabuluhan. But even though ganyan ka, pinagtiwala sa iyo ng Panginoon ng gospel. Imagine that. Imagine that. God has entrusted this very precious thing, more precious than anything in the world, into an earthen vessel that can easily be broken. This is something that is powerful to realize. The Bible says, If a man therefore purge himself from this, he shall be a vessel unto honor. This is the goal. Sanctified and meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. First Thessalonians 4.4 4, That every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctify, uh, sanctification and honor. The Bible uses this a lot. The God chose us to be His vessels, to enjoy being used by Him, to rely completely on Him because for such a fragile equipment, we are certainly not being handled with care in this world. Kung sa mundo lang, okay, imagine if Paul, an earthen vessel, everywhere he goes, people want to stone him. Everywhere he goes, people want to kill him. Everywhere he goes, people want to imprison him. That is him. If he is a fragile vessel, he can easily be broken. Madaling masira. 
Di ba? Kung, kung meron kang babasagin na bagay, hindi mo ingatan, madaling mabasag. And certainly in this world, being fragile people, being people who, are, who can be rendered useless anytime, we are in this world and people are not handling us with care. But, sabi po ng, ng, ng Bible dito, God is preserving you. Not because of you, but for the sake of what He has entrusted to you. Not because of you. Wala sa iyo. Kahit ano na magbibigay ng rason ng Panginoon para ingatan ang buhay natin. But God is preserving us. Why? Because He has something for us to do. Because He has entrusted us His glorious gospel. He is uh, uh, he's keeping us. Kaya po nakalagay dito, next verse, we are troubled on every side. Yet not distressed. Everywhere, people trying to destroy us. Everywhere, left and right. Sa harap, sa likod. Everywhere we go, people pursuing us. People trying to kill us. We are squeezed. Squeezed. Labi dito sa troubled. Ibig sabihin na to, to be squeezed, to be pressured, to be compressed. Ito yung nangyayari sa amin. But the Bible says, yet not distressed. You know, not, not because of us, but because of God who is preserving us. We are perplexed. Perplexed means uh, 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 the Greek word aporeo. Hindi apurido. Apureo. That means to be without resource, to be left wanting, to be embarrassed, to not know which way to turn or what to do, to hesitate or to be in doubt. Sabi ni Paul, every time, palagi kaming nagdududa, hindi namin alam ang gagawin namin. Imagine mo naman, sa'yo naman mangyari yun. You go, to a, you go to a place, people throw you out. So you go to another place, place, people who threw you out will follow you and then throw you out of that place. You won't know what to do. Hindi mo na alam. Ano bang gagawin ko, Panginoon? Are we going to Asia? Are we going to Macedonia? Are we going here? We don't know. But the Bible says we are perplexed. Just like you and me, these people are confused sometimes. Even though, how, uh, even though we see Apostle Paul in a lie that is one of the greatest a Christian who ever lived, but he himself is also, also perplexed. Every side, merong opposition. Every side, merong people na merong gust, na gustong uh, sirain siya. That's why he's perplexed. Minsan confused din ako. But he says, but not in despair. Despair me here means to be utterly at loss. I don't know what to do, but I hindi ako. I'm I'm lost, but I'm not completely lost. That's what uh, that's what Paul is saying. Why? Because God is the one guiding him. You see the life of the apostle Paul. Before he goes anywhere, he prays. Before he goes anywhere, he lets the Holy Spirit lead him where he wants to go. Hindi lang siya tira ng tira. Hindi lang siya basta 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 basta. Kasi ka kung sarili lang niya kaisipan, hindi niya alam kung saan siya pupunta. Everywhere, papatayin din naman ako. Where will I go? But then he waits for the Holy Spirit to lead him where? He's going. And this is something that, uh, that uh, we, we should uh, uh, also apply in our lives. Persecuted, but not forsaken. This is a great promise. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Everywhere, as I have said, everywhere they go, persecution. Everywhere they go, hardship. Everywhere they go, people are opposing them. But we are not forsaken. We are not we are not alone. Meron siya makasama but I'm sure he's talking about the Lord. He's talking about God. Whatever is happening, hey, we are not alone. Are you perplexed? Are you confused? Are you in despair? Don't you know what to do? Hey, the Lord is with you. Ask him. Rely on him. Now one, one thing about these martyrs of God, if you're reading about them, their sweetest fellowship is almost always in the midst of their greatest trial. Their sweetest fellowship with God is almost always in the midst of their greatest trial. P- the Apostle Paul sang in prison. The Apostle Paul has this a sweet fellowship with God. Whenever he, when, when the time that he was praying for God, the Lord removed this thorn in the flesh. He's closest to God in that time. And we should realize, po, mga, mga, mga kapatid, that there are really things that we will only know about God and realize in the midst of suffering. In the midst of suffering. That's why every Christian will suffer. Will suffer. If you're not suffering, you're not safe. Simple as that. You will suffer. Lahat po, they will suffer. Because Paul knows this. Paul knows this. Sabi niya sa, uh, 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 let, let's just stick first with, uh, we, we are not go, uh, going to be forsaken. We will go to suffering later. The Bible says, God will, will always be with us. Uh, I, I read this. Joan of Arc said, um, it is better to be alone with God. His friendship will not fail me, nor His counsel, nor His love. In His strength, I will dare and dare and dare until I die. 
No real fellowship with God, really uh, sweetest fellowship with God comes in the midst of persecution or suffering. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5, Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. In the midst of persecution, of being perplexed or whatever, the Lord is with you. Psalms 27.10, When my father and mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Psalm 23, 4, Yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff will comfort me. You are not forsaken. Whatever persecution you're experiencing, whatever suffering, kung ano man yan, suffering from without, suffering from within, from your family, from your friends, from unbelievers, God is always with you. That's what the Apostle Paul said. Cast down, natin, but not destroyed. Something like, this is something to do with like wrestling. You're cast down, but you're not yet out. You're not losing. Okay? We are always cast down. Always. Discourage ka, magkamali ka, you're cast down. People trying to put you down, you, they cast you down. But hey, the Bible, Apostle Paul said, you're not destroyed. You're not, you're not yet killed. You're still living, you're still walking, you're still breathing. Cast down here is the idea of wrestling match or yung, yung panahon nila, yung gladiator, where a gladiator will put you down but will not completely kill you. Okay? Whenever Paul was in prison, God always delivers him in ways that there is no doubt that it is God delivering him. Remember all these things, even Peter, not only Paul, uh, ways that God is uh, helping them. Kasi, meron pang purpose, meron pang gospel na kailangan nilang preach meron pang dapat silang gawin. That's why God is preserving us. Earthen vessels. And let's go to the next point, which is connected to this. The scars that we get from persecution because of the gospel will be a benefit to others. Okay? The scars that we get from persecution because of the gospel will be a benefit to others. Okay? There, as I have said a while ago, there are aspects of the Christian life that we can only experience with God through trials and suffering. Kaya na ni Paul. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 to 4. Blessed be God. Even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort. God, the Paul says the God of all comfort. He can only know this because God has comforted him. And he can only be comforted because he was suffering. You understand? So you know that he's a God of comfort because you experienced his comfort in the midst of suffering. Who comforted us in all our tribulation, praise the Lord, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. God is allowing all these things so that it will be a blessing to other people as well. That's why we shouldn't be ashamed of this testimony. Because the, 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 the Corinthian people here, the, the, uh, the uh, scenario here is they're ashamed. They're now doubting Paul's apostleship. Why? Because he's always in prison. But just like now, I'm a fan of the LA Lakers. But I'm now ashamed of them because they're out of the playoffs. Yun yung feeling nila. Para bang ayokong sabihin na fan ako ng Lakers. Ito yung, ito yung nangyayari sa kanila. We don't want to uh, uh, admit that Paul is now an apostle. Why? He's always in trouble. If he's really a man of God, why is he always in trouble? If he's really a man of God, why is he always suffering? If he's really a man of God, bakit nangyayari lahat ng to? But the Apostle Paul says, it's happening so that whatever we experience will be a benefit to you. Para sa iyo din yan. Okay? Uh, Matthew 10, 38, And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. Kaya mga kapatid, expect suffering in the Christian life. Expect that. Expect opposition. Expect suffering. It's not, if it's not happening, pray to God, there's something wrong. There is something wrong. Because we're not of this world. This world do not like us. This world does not like us. This world is our enemy. That's why we're going to suffer. Philippians chapter 3, verse 8 to 10. Can you uh, flash it? Because I'm not going to Philippians chapter 3, verse 8 to 10. Yeah, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the Lord, of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but dumb, that I may win Christ. No, Apostle Paul knows that through suffering, through persecution, he's knowing Christ more. Verse, verse 9, And be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Verse 10, That I may know him, and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto death. If your desire is to know Christ more, be ready for suffering. 
If your desire is to be more intimate with God, be ready for suffering. Because the Bible says, Christ suffered, you're also going to suffer. You're not greater than your master. You're going to suffer. Kaya nga, that's why Jesus Christ always described following Him as forgetting your family, taking up your cross, suffering for me. Jesus Christ never promised a beautiful life if you, in this earth if you decide to follow Him. Jesus Christ never promised riches. Because if He did, sana naging mayaman na lang siya. Jesus Christ said, even the Son of Man, wala man akong unan, wala man akong matutulugan, and you're not greater than me. And if people try to kill me, people will try to kill you too. If people persecuted me, people will persecute you as well. Take up your cross. Unless you're willing to do that, you are not worthy of me. Hindi po ako nagsabi niyan. Bible po nagsabi. Unless you're willing to suffer for me, you're not worthy to be called a follower, a disciple of Christ. That is hard. That is a hard saying. Hard saying. Kung meron kang hindi kayang bitawan para sa akin, dyan ka na lang. Sabi ni Kristo, wag na lang. Wag mo na lang akong sundin. Kasi, karapat dapat ka lang sumunod kung handa kang talikuran lahat, bitawan lahat ng sinasabi kong bitawan mo. You will suffer. And, 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 and this means hurting. This means, this means you will hurt. Ibig sabihin, masakit. Alam nga namang, marami kang talikuran at bitawan na, na ine-enjoy mo at mahal mo yung buhay na gusto mo na hindi ka masasaktan. Of course, you will get hurt. Anong, ano, ano, anong ina-expect natin? I follow Christ. Magiging mayaman, ganda ang bahay, maganda ko, siya maraming pera. Sometimes it happens, but then most of the time it doesn't. And the Bible says, unless you're willing to experience what I've experienced, you're not worthy of me. Kapatid, let's let that sink in. Sa atin, mga minsan takot tayo eh. We're afraid to suffer. We're afraid to suffer for Christ. And we're afraid to lose friends. We're afraid to lose relationships. We're afraid to turn our backs on the life that we have enjoyed. But hey, the Bible says you're not worthy if you're afraid. If you're not willing, if you're not ready to remove all of these things, take up the cross and follow me. You're not worthy. Apostle Paul understands this. Kaya nga sabi niya, so then death worketh in us, uh, next verse, but life in you. And this is a very uh, parabang, uh, 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 ironic. But sinasabi nila, you're not really an apostle because you're suffering. But they don't realize that be- the reason why Paul is an effective apostle, that Paul is an effective, effective preacher, that God is using Paul effectively dahil sa kanyang sufferings. They hate him because of his sufferings, but the reason why the gospel was preached to them is because of that. The reason why Paul is an effective preacher is because of the sufferings. Now they're hating him because of that. That is what's happening. Yun yung nangyayari dito. Kaya nga sabi ni Paul, hey, kaya nangyayari sa amin to for your sake. It is for your sake. Um, what verse is that? I think 11. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake that the life also might be made. Uh, Simulat is at 10. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Yan yun. That the life of, also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. Makikita lang yun because of these sufferings. Verse 11. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. All these things are working. Okay? Working. Para sa ating testimony for the gospel. 12. So then death worketh in us, but life in you. Okay, effective. His effectivity is because of all these sufferings. But take note, he's not suffering because of his wrongdoings. Okay, put that into context. He's not suffering because of the things he's done. He's suffering for the truth. Suffering for the gospel. So think of that. Minsan kasi iniisip natin si Job tayo, pero sa totoo si Jonah tayo. Diba? Oh, I'm suffering oh, this because of the Lord. No, because you're disobedient. Because you're Jonah, because you don't want to obey. Uh, but the, sometimes you suffer because of, like Paul, like Job. They suffer without really doing anything wrong, they just suffer because people don't like them doing the right thing. There's a big difference. I, I, uh, I differentiate po natin yan. So, uh, something, the scars we get from persecution because of the gospel will be a benefit to others. That's why, kung ikaw nag-suffer, if you have suffered and God has brought you through that suffering, you stand up and share it to people. Why? It will be a blessing. It will be a help. You don't know someone might be going through that same thing you went through. Kaya kung ano man yung pinarana sa'yo ng Panginoon, kapatid, gagamitin niya ng Panginoon. 
Gagamitin ng Panginoon niyan para sa iba, para maging encouragement ka, para yung comfort na naramdaman mo, ma-share mo din sa ibang tao. Okay? Uh, let's, let's go uh, quickly. Next point. Verse 13. Truly believing this ministry, the gospel, and this glorious gospel of God will result into testifying about it. Ang resulta po ng tunay na nakaranas ng kaligtasan. The result of a person who is truly saved and who truly believes the gospel will testify about it. Verse number 13 says, We having the same spirit of faith according as it is written, I believe and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore we speak. Kaya nga po mga kapatid, kaya lang tayo nahihirapan mag-share. Maybe we don't really believe the power of the gospel. Why? Kasi hindi po excuse na hindi ko alam kung paano share. Why? Because you experience it yourself. How can you not know how to share your own experience? It's impossible unless you forgot about it. Unless you didn't really experience it. Diba kaya nga po, madali po, kaya nga po minsan sa atin, ang hirap, hindi natin kaya mag-share, invite na, in-invite na lang sa, natin sa church, which we understand. But then, mga kapatid, the goal is to be able to share the gospel anywhere, anytime, with anyone. Because who, who knows, baka yun na yung last time na makausap mo yung tao. You should be able to do that. Marami tayong kilala, marami tayong kaibigan. Can you share the gospel to them? Have you even tried sharing the gospel to them? O nahihiya ka dahil alam mo hindi ka paninawalaan. That is really... Uh, shameful. Testify, testify about the saving faith in Christ. Though this is only possible because we have experienced it. And verse 14 said, testify also about the resurrection and the hope we have because of it. Verse number 14, knowing that he which raises up, the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus and shall present us with you. You know, Paul is bold. Paul is able to to, to uh, 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 suffering. Paul is able to do this. Why? Because he wholly believes the Lord Jesus Christ. Because he wholly believes that God will come again. Because he knows that even if he dies, he will be resurrected. Because he knows that God will be taking him when he dies. He, because his faith is there. Kaya all out siya. Kaya mga kapatid, pag minsan hindi tayo all out because it's unbelief only. Sabi na lang Bible, gawin mo to, sumunod ka, Ito ang gagawin ko. But, hindi nangyayari. Bakit? Totoo bang gagawin ng Panginoon? Pag binitawan ko to hindi ginawa ng Panginoon. Sayang. Diba? Because we don't really believe it. Kaya nga po, in, in our, in our uh, um, Bible study every Wednesday, we're studying about the Word of God and how true it is. And we realize, mga, uh, uh, ladies, uh, brethren, that we can easily say that the Bible, we believe the Bible and the Bible is our final authority but not really believe that in our hearts. Why? Because we don't take the Bible as it is. We don't take it as it is. Marami, there are many things in the Bible that is commanded to us, but you're not doing it because you don't believe it. There are many promises of God that are, 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 are uh, uh, married with a premise, but you're not doing it because you don't really believe it. Kaya lang sinabi about follow me, you're not really following God because you don't believe that it will be a life worth living. You're not really doing what is being said behind this pulpit because you don't really believe that the Bible is the Word of God and it is the final authority in your life. Sad to say, but it's true. Kaya lang hindi ka sumusunod, hindi ka naniniwala sa Bible. Hindi mo talagang pinapaniwala. You're like a Catholic. Catholics will say, hey, I believe the Bible is the Word of God. But if this contradicts my tradition, if this contradicts my life, if this contradicts my own desires, I will not believe it anymore. Madali kasi sabihin. But then, is the Bible really your final authority? Do you really believe the gospel to be able to be bold and share it? Do you really believe that? Makati, it's easy to say. Most of us, our final authorities are emotion. If this will make me sad, I will not let go of it. If this will make me unhappy, I will not do it. Sometimes our final authority is our own perception, our own wisdom. Sabi ng Bible, ganito, pero sa tingin ko, outdated na yan. Yan yung time nila. Meron mas magandang paraan ngayon. Then you don't really believe the Bible. You don't really believe it. Okay? Sabi ni Paul, we believe, therefore we speak. Being saved, you cannot help but talk about it. Ganda nung kanta ng choir kanina. Let me tell you the old, old story, the sweet story. Let me tell the details to you. Why? Because I experienced it. Let me give God the glory because I experienced it. Once I was heading for hell, now I'm heading for heaven. Once I was dead in my sin, now I'm facing God. Now I'm living a life worth living. Let me share that to you. Yun po yung tao na, na talagang ligtas. Dalawang point na lang po. Tapusin natin. Okay. 
Actually, the, the next point is uh, in verse 15. Sabi dito, For all things are for your sakes. Okay? Para sa inyo, suffering, all these things na naranasan namin, para sa inyo. That the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. I just want to use this verse to emphasize that always the end goal is the glory of God. Yes, I, all my sufferings para matulungan kayo, but it's always so that you will give glory to God. And Paul knows that if the end is not glorifying God, then it's the wrong thing to do. That means if you're in this ministry, if you're in this church, if you're in this life, and you're in Cambodia, not for the glory of God, that means you're in the wrong place. Or maybe your heart is in the wrong place. Okay? It's always the glory of God. Verse number 16. For which cause we faint not again. Balik tayo sa una, first verse. Not faint. For which cause, because of these things, because of the gospel and the glory, we faint not. But though our outward man perish, Yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Next verse, verse number. For our light affliction. Look, look at the adjective there. Light affliction. Nothing compared to the glory, the glory of this gospel that we have. Which is but for a moment compared to the eternity we're going to have. Work it for us. People meant it bad. It's working for us. People want to kill us. Hey, it's working for us. Works for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Kaya mga kapatid, if we decide the glory of this world, it's foolish. Far more exceeding and eternal. For a moment, eternal. Light affliction, glory of God. Glory of this world, eternal glory. Kapatid, it is not even comparable but we are living most of the time for this world our mind is in this world our focus is in this world i want to have this i want to have that kapatid it's temporal it's for a moment hindi po magtatagal the bible says yes tiisin nyo lang they meant it for bad that way when you get to heaven far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory that's why my last point success in this ministry lies on where your focus is. It depends. Saan ka ba naka-focus? What is your focus? What is your goal? Paano ka magiging successful sa ministry? Saan ka nakadepende ang kung saan ka nakatingin? Verse 18, While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Now, Examine yourself. Examine your life. Examine, put yourself in the light of the scripture. Are you living a life worthy of the gospel? Are you putting in your mind for the sake of the gospel, for the sake of the gospel, for the sake of the glory of God? I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to endure this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to be faithful for the sake of the gospel. Is that, what, is that what's happening? Or baka hindi mo magawa kasi yung mind mo nakafocus sa mundo. Yung mind mo nakafocus sa success na gusto mo. Yung mind mo nakafocus sa coaching gusto mo mabili. Yung mind mo nakafocus sa bahay na gusto mo mabili. Yung mind mo nakafocus sa buhay na gusto mo magkaroon. Kapatid, it's not about you. It's not about what you want. It's about what God has put in you. Although unworthy as we are, God has entrusted the gospel to us. Mga kapatid, live lives worthy of that. Focus on eternal things. Do what God wants you to do. This is temporal. Kahit na hindi natin ma-achieve yung gusto natin, it's temporal. Kahit na mahirap, it's temporal, mga kapatid. There is an eternal and more exceeding glory that is waiting for us, kapatid. Let us be faithful to that and focus on that. Let us live lives for the sake of the gospel, mga kapatid. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the, uh, this morning. We thank you for this chapter. And uh, I pray, Lord, that you help us continually, dear Lord, to accept this and apply in our lives. I pray that uh, as, as we have heard the message that we will respond to it and not only respond and pray and kneel down in front dear Lord but really decide changes in our lives Lord uh, that will be, bring glory to your name I pray Lord that we will continue to decrease uh, what we see in ourselves and always magnify you in our lives Panginoon then realize that it's all about you nothing about us Panginoon Salamat po may you be glorified in the things that we're going to do in Jesus name